What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I make my sea moss. There's a lot of videos of how to make sea moss and I feel like it's pretty straightforward, but in my videos, I have been using sea moss and I just wanna show you guys my method. As you guys have seen in different videos, I have actually used my sea moss and bladder act powder, which I have here. And this is something that I've kind of always used. I've actually bought my sea moss from two different companies. This one right here, I feel like might be fake sea moss. And then this one here from Hope Gardens Kitchen, also Nini Fem Health, um, is probably the real sea moss. There's definitely some differences. So I do wanna say that I have tried this, but my, my preference is definitely this one. So, if you guys are learning about sea moss for the first time in this video, sea moss has 92 minerals. It's great for your joints, great for libido, great for skin, great for hair growth, great for energy. It's very high in iron, really great for iodine deficiency, your thyroid, good for feminine health. And people who are pregnant can also take sea moss. Babies can take sea moss. Honestly, the sea moss options are endless. So, how do you start? I'm gonna start by taking a small amount of my Hope Garden sea moss really hard so I have to break it apart a little goes a very long way with the sea moss so if I'm just one person in the house I don't really need that much I personally would rather have a small batch of sea moss and make it at a higher frequency rather than having a large batch of sea moss and, and having it last a longer amount of time some people say that sea moss expires after a week. Some people say that you can keep it up to two or three weeks. I personally like to make it fresh. So after you've picked a decent amount of sea moss, you then rinse it off. You're rinsing it off to get all the impurities, the sand, um, any dirt, things like that. So taking a bit of sea moss. I'm washing my hands for anyone who says you keep touching your hair. Okay, so I personally like to rinse off my sea moss with spring water. I don't like using water from the faucet. I'm in California, your water might be better, but ours is not. So I like to put my intention into my sea moss. I like to break it up. You can kind of see some of the sand. I feel like, honestly, this sea moss is much cleaner than the sea moss that I bought before from Etsy. So after you rub your sea moss in, you can feel it softening up. And then you can also see the color of the water is not very clear. So after it's rinsed off and I've cleaned it, I like to strain this water out. Then I do one more rinse. Some spring water. Rinse it out. The water is much more clear at this point and the sea moss is softening up. As you can see, it is has already expanded in comparison to here. It's much more loose, much more fluid, and you can pick it apart. Now that it's soaked, I, I strain it one more time. And now that it's strained, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into a bowl. Now I'm going to put water. This, this sea moss will expand within the next uh, four to 12 hours. So you do want to cover the sea moss with the water. So when you pour the water in, you want to make sure that it's the consistency of your liking. The more water that you put, is you're going to have more of a watery consistency in your sea moss gel. If you put less water, then you're going to have a thicker sea moss gel. You also have to keep in consideration that this is going to expand. So this might look like a lot of water, but within the next 4 to 12 hours, the sea moss is going to expand and it's gonna soak up all the water, making it easier to blend. Another thing that I wanna say is I like to add lime into my sea moss. Lime is not only alkaline, but it also helps with the taste of the sea moss. When I have added one whole lime to my sea moss water, it has definitely helped neutralize the taste of the sea moss. So now taking my lime juice, I'm going to pour the juice into the water. After that, you just mix it up. Make sure that it's nice and even. And typically I like to cover this with a glass top, but this bowl is 
not flat, so I can't do that. I'm trying to eliminate my use of plastic. So instead of using plastic to cover this, I'm actually gonna just co cover it with a, a kitchen cloth. Now I'm gonna go ahead and leave my sea moss to soak for the next four to eight hours, and then I will check back in with you so that we can make it into a gel. Cutting this video just for a quick little infomercial break. Y'all, like, subscribe, please. According to the analytics, only 13% of you guys are subscribed. So please subscribe to my channel, like this video if it's helpful. Now let's go ahead and get right back into the video. Now I wanna show you guys, for any sea moss experts, to, to let me know if I ordered fake sea moss. Okay, so this one is the one that smells like sea moss, feels like sea moss, it's very dry. I'll go ahead and put this out. This one, this one is very dry. It's very brittle doesn't really have a strong smell. It tastes very salty, but it's hard. It's kind of good if you like salty. I like salty. And then this one is the one that I got from Etsy. It says it's wild harvest, wild crafted sea moss. This one smells like bleach, kind of. It's more, it feels like it's already expanded. And I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is fake. You see, like, it's like, you see the difference? I actually made this into sea moss gel and I had it. This one I soaked for two days. One of the tutorials that I watched, it said to soak it for two days and then take that water out and then blend it because then it would get rid of the fishy smell. But after I logically thought about it, all the nutrients are actually going to be in the water that you soak it in because it extracts. So once you dump that water, I feel like you dump the nutrients that that sea moss had anyways. So that method wasn't in alignment with me. So I definitely gravitate towards more of the Hope Garden method and the sea moss, not only because of the logic of dumping out the water dumps out the nutrients, but also just the feel of the sea moss. This one right here is really dry and brittle. And this one's like... That's my little sea moss experience. Let me know if I bought some fake sea moss. Let me know any tips that you guys have on identifying real sea moss versus fake sea moss. But yeah, that's my little sea moss rant. Now let's go ahead and just get back into the gel. So now we're about six hours later and it's time to blend. So before it blends, let's go ahead and see what the sea moss is looking like. And as you can see, it has completely expanded. This sea moss is much bigger. And as you can see, it's gonna make a lot more gel. So now all you do, I have a um, Vitamix. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my Vitamix and literally pour water and sea moss included into the cup. You can see the foggy color because of the lime and stuff. All of my sea moss inside. A quick little blend and we have our sea moss gel. Right now it is warm, so it's very runny, but right when you put it into your container and put it in the fridge, it will harden up and it will be a more gel-like consistency, which you'll have to actually see tomorrow. When I was first transitioning into a more plant-based diet or even when I just cold turkey went full alkaline for a detox, my biggest struggle was my addiction to certain foods like my love for cheese on almost any and everything and I loved bacon. It wasn't until I started working with herbs and educating myself on the benefits of the herbs that I was able to completely cut out toxic foods without craving them. Before I was just using willpower to avoid them, but I personally saw how certain foods that I love affected my mental health, 
my hormones, my skin was ridiculous, and just my overall greed for food just because. But if this is something that is new to you and you need some more help or some more guidance, I would suggest listening to audiobooks like Power Food and Food Over Medicine to learn about how some of the hormones and chemicals that are put into your food can affect your mood, energy, fertility, hair, skin, nails, and even your happiness. I also have a lot of videos on herbs and where I started with my herbal journey that I will go ahead and link down below. You guys can try out listening to any of these books by going to www.audible.com slash findguru or you can text findguru to 500, 500 to get your first audiobook within the first 30 days. All right, y'all, so it's day two and I just grabbed my sea moss out of the fridge. Let's go ahead and see what the consistency is like. The consistency is much more watery, which is fine. This is gonna be great for smoothies and all of that. Now you can see how much more chunky it is. It's not as thick of a gel. I put more water in it, but it's still gonna be just fine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you a few different ways that I would use the sea moss gel. I obviously just poured a whole bunch into the bowl. I'm not gonna waste it. So one way that I would make sea moss gel is with <clears throat> my breakfast. So here I have an alkaline grain, which is amaranth, and I already have my sea moss gel in. So I would just take my amaranth and put it in. I would actually do this the other way. I'd put the amaranth first, but you know, it's all good. So now we have the amaranth, and you just go ahead and mix it with your sea moss gel. Amaranth is an ancient grain and it, and it I think it originated in the Mayan ruins. Some of the things I like to add to my amaranth bowl are hemp seed, some type of fruit. I'm going to do a banana because my bananas are ripening up, as well as some flax seed. I will just be taking about two tablespoons of flax seed. I like flax seed. Then I would take a tablespoon of hemp seed, which is great source of protein. For some additional flavor, I am gonna add a little bit of vanilla, which I should have added in my amaranth first. But this is just on the fly. These are just little toppings that can help um, your breakfast taste good and then also mask the sea moss if your sea moss is a bit strong. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of cinnamon. I'm gonna put a little bit of cinnamon then I'm gonna take my banana and just cut it right into, cut it right into my bowl. And there we have a predominantly alkaline breakfast. We have bananas, flax seed, hemp seed, cinnamon, as well as a little bit of vanilla and sea moss. And this is a balanced breakfast. It's not completely alkaline. You can make it alkaline if you like. And this is something you can enjoy. So I'm going to be very annoying and actually mix this whole thing up so that I can taste it on camera and you guys can see I can tell you guys about my opinion it's really good mm -mm -mm. but I'm so sad I ran it out of agave I typically would add a little bit of agave to sweeten this up or maybe just a sweeter fruit but it's good just like this as well so this is one way that you can incorporate your sea moss gel into your food. And the next way that you can incorporate sea moss is through a smoothie. So I'm going to take some of my frozen frozen fruit and I'm going to add some strawberries. I'm only going to make like one smoothie, so it's not going to be that much. Then I'm going to take some pineapple, one tablespoon of kale powder, two heaping spoonfuls of sea moss gel, and I'm going to juice a lime as well as a grapefruit. I always like juicing fresh fruit because it helps make the smoothie a bit more sweet. Lime, I pretty much add in everything. I am a limeaholic and it, alkal it alkalizes a lot of things. So I just, I mean, any excuse to use lime. And one thing that I have been holding off is buying a juicer because I feel like it's just like another thing to have in the kitchen. Even though I know it would be good to have. Another thing is I just feel like juicers, 
are like too much of a cleaning process if y'all have juicers and you think it's like life-changing just put your opinions down below because i have been holding off buying a juicer for myself and then And then I like to move the pulp around because sometimes the juice doesn't make it. It kind of gets stuck in the pulp. So just move the pulp around, make sure all the juice is coming out. Probably it's easier if I use a spoon. My spoon is dirty. So now I'm gonna pour the juice from a grapefruit as well as a lime into my smoothie mix. And it's almost enough liquid, but I am going to add a tiny bit of spring water. And All right, y'all, so that concludes my video on how I make my sea moss, how I use it in my day-to-day -day life. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have ways that you like to use your sea moss gel or how you guys make your sea moss gel, go ahead and share that in the comments below. If you guys have any tips or tricks how to decipher between fake sea moss and real sea moss, put those tips below. Yeah, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I will go ahead and see you in the next upload. Bisous!